Hey guys, my name is Dakota, and I'm the newest addition to Slasher, the Slasher Mini Network. And I was brought here by David Gracia to uh, do music reviews, movie reviews, rants, video game reviews, etc. And you know, for my since it's my first video, I wanted to make it special, especially for me. And it's going to be a music video of the entire disc oh, music video. <laughs> Why did I say that? A music review of um. The entire discography of my favorite band, Blink-182, besides the greatest hits, because I don't have it. Um, I wish I did, though. But, uh, you know, let's get started right into their first album, and this is Buddha. This was released in 1998 by Kung Fu Records, but it contains uh, all these songs recorded in uh, between the years 1992 and 1993. On their uh, on a few demos they had like Fly Swatter, the original Buddha demo, and uh, let's open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, and it had um original remastered songs uh like Carousel, TV, Strings, Ventusler, uh and Toast and Bananas, and uh they also this also includes a cover of a uh, screeching weasels the the girl next door other than that th this is this is a good album it's a good um early 90s skate punk album uh the the audio wasn't very good because they didn't have a really really good studio so it's really a uh, distortiony and gritty but i i would still recommend it because it's just a good it's just a good record to skate to all right let's move on to their next album this was their first album actual album released in 1994 uh, with uh, Grilled Cheese Records and Cargo Music entitled Cheshire Cat. Let's open it up right here. Alright, this album, they didn't really write much new, uh, a lot of new songs, they just remade in a better quality of old songs from their demos like Carousel, Fentuzler, Strings, TV, and Toasting it, Toast and Bananas. But it also, uh, the revamped version of Carousel on this album was uh, a very popular underground skate punk single, and so was their other song on this album called Eminem's. Peggy Sue, another song on here, is also a very notable skate punk uh, song. And, uh, and, you know, they have a couple of songs here that really, they're not really songs, they're just them goofing off uh, while recording. And they're called Just About Done and Depends. Very goofy songs, like they don't really make much sense. But if you ever really want a good laugh, they're pretty funny. And this album was uh, th this album uh, caught the Vans Warp Tour attention uh, back when Vans Warp Tour just started, and then um, and then they started uh, playing on the Warp Tour in 1995 and all the way through until 1999. All right, let's get into their next record, which was their first taste of mainstream success, and it's called Dude Ranch. It was released at MCA Records in 1997. Let's open it up right here. CD kind of looks like the inside of a revolver with the bullets and whatnot. Now this is, is in my top three favorite Blink albums. This is a fantastic skate punk album. You know, they have really notable skate punk songs like Pathetic, Voyeur, Dick Lips, Untitled, Apple Shampoo, and Enthused and Degenerate. And they had two big, you know, commercially successful singles from this album. One is called Damn It, and the other one is called Josie. And uh, this album, also with the last two that I just mentioned, mentioned uh, consisted of the original lineup of Blink-182, Mark Hoppus, who is a bassist and vocals, Tom DeLong, who's guitarist and vocals, and drummer Scott Rayner. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to Scott Rayner later uh, into the review, but this is a very great album. I recommend it extremely if you're a fan of uh, skate punk, if you know any other skate punk bands like, I guess, 90s Dinosaur Jr. or Lagwagon, very notable skate punk band. But I definitely recommend this. You'll have a fun time listening to this if you're a skate punk fan. Alright, this next album 
was their breakthrough album and the departure of drummer Scott Rayner. And I'm referring to 1999's Enema of the State. And uh, it was released on MCA Records. And uh, and it introduced uh, the new drummer, Travis Barker. For Travis Barker, we all know him today. He's widely popular with different styles of drumming now, not just punk. But this was their breakthrough album. They, uh, they had hugely popular singles in here, such as What's My Age Again, All the Small Things, and Adam's Song. And, uh, and they also have uh, very other good pop-punk songs. The reason why I say pop-punk, because I believe that this is Blink-182's first ever pop-punk album. Because when, when Scott Rayner left the band and Travis Barker left, uh, joined the band, I think it really changed their sound to a point where it's not skate punk anymore because, you know, the skate punk drum beat is very generic. It's all the same in every single song. And when Travis Barker came in, since he's, he's a talented drummer, he, he shook things up a bit in basically every other song. So he wanted to change things up a, up a bit, and his style of drumming was a, a bit more complex than Scott Rayner's. So it made it sound more popish than um, – than skate punkish, but this is this is also has very notable songs like Dumpweed, Don't Leave Me, Aliens Exist, Dysentery Gary, The Party Song, Mutt, and Anthem. All right, um, I'm gonna get to the next album, which is another gem in their collection, and it's 2001's Take Off Your Pants and Jacket from MCA Records. Now, to me, this is the greatest pop punk album of all time. I've listened to many pop punk albums, such as you know the Fall, Fall Out Boy's albums, even some of All Time Low's albums, and Man Overboard, and uh, um, The Wonder Years. But all in all, this is the best pop punk album ever, and uh, and it has big big singles featuring uh. The Rock Show, Stay Together for the Kids, and First Date. And um, they also have very notable songs like Anthem Part 2. I wouldn't consider that a single. It got some radio play, but it never got the recognition, the recognition that it really deserved. And there were great pop punk songs like Online Songs, uh, Reckless Abandon, which is a great pop punk song, Roller Coaster, Every Time I Look for You, just... Just an all-around perfectly perfected pop punk album. It, it felt like they really took their time with this to make it uh, pop punk, and it also it also even felt like an homage to their you know their hometowns in California because this is also very SoCal. So it's kind of like a SoCal pop punk album. It's very great. I recommend it to pop punk fans anywhere. You know, uh, I'm I guarantee that you'll like it. Oh no, I almost forgot to mention this one. This is actually this one actually came out in 2000. It was a live album called The Mark, Tom, and Travis Show, The Enema Strikes Back. And this was from their 1999-2000 tour, touring, you know, with songs from Cheshire Cat, Dude Ranch, and Enema of the State. It has about 20 tracks, you know, all, uh, 19 of them are live, and the last one is, uh, is a studio recording uh, titled Man Overboard. Which was a popular radio single. Very catchy pop punk album. I, I recommend listening to it. And uh, this album also has hidden tracks. I don't really call them tracks because um, you know they're just like 30, sne 30 second snippets of just them cracking jokes live on stage, which are pretty funny. They're pretty funny guys. They're pretty messed up. Yeah, I, I if you like live albums, this is a pretty good live album. It's it's got good music. Tom DeLonge actually sounds sober live in this one, and uh, it's very funny. Now, this next album I'm going to do was their uh, introduction into a more like a mature, darker side, but was still considered pop punk. And I'm referring to their 2003 self titled uh, released on Geffen Records. And uh, this is my favorite Blink 182 album just because I think the lyrics and the songs relate a lot to uh, things that have happened in my life. So I have a special connection with this album, and it has popular uh, 
mainstream singles like Feeling This, I Miss You, which was huge, um, Down, and Always. And also very notable songs on this album, Violence, Obvious, Stockholm Syndrome, Go, Asthenia, Here's Your Letter, uh, Easy Target, and all of this featuring Robert Smith from The Cure. Yeah, this was a, was was a pretty good album. This is when they uh, this was the last album they came out with before they went on a five year uh hiatus, uh due to due to problems with the band and wanting to change directions with the band. Tom wanted to make it a more uh U two ish sound, but uh Mark and Travis wanted to keep it a more pop punk sound. So Tom left. You know, it was just a big argument and. And everything. What, Mom? What? I can't. I'm making a video. I'm making a video. Sorry about that, you guys. But, uh, this last album that they came out with, <laughs> sorry, my mom was yelling at me. Um, uh, th this was the last album they came out with. They. It took a, about two and a half years to make this album after they uh, came out of their hiatus in 2009. It started in 2004 ish, 2005. Um, and basically, at, when, when they came back, they did a big tour in US and Europe. And right when they were doing that, they went to the studios to record their uh, 2011 album, which is Neighborhoods, which is actually on DCG and Interscope Records. And uh, this is the deluxe version, by the way, which is black and white. The original version is white and black. If you're going to get this album, I, rec I recommend the deluxe version just because um, it adds an extra four or five tracks. I can't remember. Five tracks. Five tracks, yeah. And uh, no, I think just four. Just, yeah. But um, to me, this is my second favorite Blink album because I think it's, it's genius in every way. It's still very dark. But they they uh, they transitioned from pop punk to more of an alternative uh, sound just because of their other band in influences like Angels and Airwaves and Plus Forty Four, and they've already had two popular singles off of this album, Up All Night and After Midnight, which are great songs. I love them both, and for uh, a few months now they've been hinting a couple more singles, uh, Ghost on the Dance Floor and uh, Hearts All Gone. But uh, this is a, an all-around just great album. Uh, like I said, it's very dark. They have dark lyrics. Um, but not so much of a darker sound as their last self-titled. And Hearts All Gone, even though uh, I don't consider Blink a pop-punk band anymore, I think Hearts All Gone is the greatest pop-punk song I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, if that was on Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, I wouldn't be shocked because it's, it's a perfect pop-punk song. Which I recommend that you listen to, Sebastian, because I'm tagging you in this video once I put it on Facebook. Um, and you know, the other, other than the songs, the four songs that I mentioned, they have very notable songs on here, like Natives, which is also sort of a pop punkish sound, Snake Charmer, which is a very alternative sound, it's great, Wishing Well, which is actually probably the only happy song on this album. It's a very happy song, it's very upbeat, it's catchy, it's a nice song. It's like a good song to run to, or You're Just Me, um, just listen to it in general. Kaleidoscope is great. This Is Home is very upbeat, but with very punk lyrics. Um, Love is Dangerous, one of their out, one of their songs in here, which I think is completely alternative, but it's great. Fighting the Gravity is 100% an alternative song. Like, it's, there's no way that it could be pop punk if... If anyone says that, you're just wrong, because it's, it's just alternative, and it's it's great. And then, you know, um, they have other good songs, like Even If She Falls, which is like a love song, a somewhat dark love song, and uh, MH418-2011, which MH stands for Mark Hoppus, is the, the song is titled that because that's when he wrote the song, uh, which was April 18th, 2011. Also, a uh, very uh, pop punkish sound. Just basically, the only pop punk songs on this whole album are Natives, 
Heart's All Gone, and MH4 1811. Every other song is basically alternative. But David, I hope you listen to this album sometime soon because I think you'll like it. It's very good. Um, I definitely recommend it. Well, I recommend all the Blink albums because I love them so much. But uh, other than that, th those are all the albums. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I should be putting up another you know, movie review, music review sometime soon. All right, bye, guys.